Well, in the initial instant after the battery is connected to the transmission line, as we close the switch, at time t equals 0 plus, so right after the switch is closed, the upper conductor, connected to the positive side of the battery, has a net positive charge relative to the bottom conductor, which is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. Now we have two wires, or conductors, that are separated by some distance and are of opposite charge. What happens when we have separation of charge? Think of a capacitor, where we have separation of positive and negative charges on the different plates of the capacitor. What extends between the two plates of charges? An electric field. What is something else that happens? Let's consider what happens along each of the two conductors of the transmission line. The conductors are made out of metal, which has atoms or molecules with free electrons. These free electrons in the conductors feel the net positive and negative charges of the battery, and they start to migrate. Remember, electrons on the top conductor physically move to the left, and on the bottom conductor they move to the right, but current direction is given by the direction of positive charge. What do we call this migration of electrons? Current. What else happens? When current is flowing, think of another basic circuit element, the analog to a capacitor. When there is current flowing, we will get a magnetic field circulating around the current, according to the right-hand rule. And energy is stored in this magnetic field, meaning that there will be an inductance along the wires. These wires are straight instead of spiraled, as we usually think of inductors. But energy can still be stored in the magnetic field around a straight wire. You can see the magnetic field here. The magnetic fields are set up according to the right-hand rule, where you point your thumb in the direction of the current, and then the right-hand fingers curl around in the direction of the magnetic field. Now, before we go on, I have a question for you. Oh, sorry, I never got this out of the way. How far does an electron travel in one second down a copper wire? Like each of the conductors of the transmission line? Here are some assumptions you can make. The copper wire has a radius of 3.175 millimeters. The number of free electrons per meter cubed is 8.4 times 10 to the 28th. This is the number of electrons we have available to travel down the conducting wire. Each electron has a charge of 1.6 e to the minus 19 coulombs. And assume for simplicity that we have just, uh, we have one amp, nominal amp of current flowing along the wire. Lastly, I'll tell you that based on measurements, we know that one amp is equal to one coulomb of charge per second. Go ahead and see if you can determine the speed of each electron on these conductors.